Hello everyone, it is me Noel. Hello, it feels so great to be making this video because as you can tell from the title, it is about Riverdale, which today is the 19th, tomorrow is the 20th, which means season five Riverdale premieres tomorrow. Oh my God, we finally made it. We made it, we made it, we made it. Let's just round of applause people, round of applause. We made it, we made it, yes. So yeah, season five premieres tomorrow and I felt like making a video talking about some of the stuff I have saved, some of the little spoilers, you know, that kind of thing. Just talking about Riverdale in general and season five and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, I have my little thoughts and opinions and things I have to say too. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. No. Um, okay, so first let me start by saying, uh, Lily Reinhardt, A.K. Betty Cooper, told on, she did an interview on Stephen Colbert, and she said that Betty is actually an FBI trainee, which, hallelujah, that's what I expected her to be, is an FBI agent, FBI trainee, whatever, you know, I expected her to work with the FBI, like, that was just, like, a given. However, it's interesting that she's at the school, though, because, like, why is she at the school if she's working for the FBI? Interesting. Also, KJ said in an interview, and I quote, We are raiding this place. We got lots of guns. Lots of guns. Riverdale's getting crazier and crazier, which makes me think, could Betty and Archie be teaming up? Because if so, I'm here for it. Like, I don't even care about, you know, like, if they're dating or all that. Like, just them teaming up would be fucking awesome. Like, could you imagine these two with guns, like, raiding a place together? Oh, my God. That would just be so epic. Like, they would be the best team they would be like the most epic duo and also it would move away from investigating with Jughead sorry but like come on um so yeah so that was definitely something I found extremely interesting because it's like oh could they be working together like you know because he obviously goes to the Naval Academy he has experience and stuff with guns and you know he's a strong ass man as I as I've seen because I mean if you watch the sneak peek with him and uh K.O then you see that this dude's strong. Archie is strong. Like, he fucking destroyed him with all those sit-ups and, or not sit-ups, with all those push-ups, all those uh, pull-ups. Like, damn, Archie just kept going, and the other guy could not keep up. So it's like, that's my Archie. That's my Archie. No, but yeah, I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Also, again, you know, like, I, I get why they're at the school, but also it's kind of like, Archie was going to be a fireman, and, like, he clearly is if he has, like, the uniform, but in the picture, not much of a uniform, which, whew, that picture does not leave my mind at all. But, um, so, like, it's interesting that Betty's working for the FBI, and Archie is going to be a firefighter, but yet he's working at the school, so is he not going to be a firefighter? Because I'm pretty sure he is. So, like, why are they at the school? It's interesting. I wonder what's happened, especially Betty. Like, if she's working for the FBI, why is she working at the school? Just saying. Just saying. Then again, why are any of them working at the school? But, hey, whatevs, you know. Um... So yeah, I wanted to say that because that was so exciting. Also, where the fuck did my... Okay. So, let's get into it. So, Chapter 77, Climax, which is Season 5, Episode 1, Betty and Jughead's investigation into the on-tour leads them to a secret underground for Red Band screenings. I wonder if this is where the fight happens with Jughead, because if you remember in the season five trailer, Jughead gets in a fight in this like room that I've never seen before, where there's a bunch of people, and I'm like, who is he fighting and where was he at? So maybe this is where the fight ensues, you know, that we saw in the trailer, because like, that's what I'm assuming. To impress the Naval Academy, com uh, to impress the Naval Academy, Archie participates in a boxing match against another candidate, K.O. Kelly. Ooh, shit. Shit. We know who's gonna win. Archie. Like, dude, Archie literally destroyed him. Not saying the fight, because we haven't seen that yet, but just in his strength alone, he destroyed him. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, my God. Okay. So, now moving on. Now, in the 501 sneak peek, we have Betty and Jughead 
asking Cheryl to do a snuff film basically for them where you know the classic story girl meets boy boy meets girl boy ends up killing girl you know that story you know happens a lot <laughs> in Riverdale most likely um at first she's like not down for it but like doing a snuff film but then they're like well it's the only way to take down the auteur who's filming and reenacting these murders like Jason and your father Clifford and so of course that right there is like okay yeah I do want to take him down so what do you need me to do and they tell her you know basically like I said boy meets girl girl meets boy boy kills girl and so it got me thinking when I watched that sneak peek I was like oh because she says she wants to wear a wig so no one can tell who she is it got me thinking that's it reminded me of the picture, which I'll put in here. It, oh, actually, I might have it on my phone. Let me get it. Hold on. Because I was wondering why, what this picture was all about. And now it makes total sense. It makes total sense now. This picture. Because as you see, she's, uh, oh yeah, and it's this, Betty's wearing the exact same sweater. So yeah, this is it. Remember this picture? Because Cheryl's obviously wearing a wig. That guy is the person who's going to kill her, obviously. And now it makes sense why the dress had blood on it. Because this is from this is from the scene where they're filming the video for the on tour, you know, to try and kind of lure him in. And now it makes sense. Because I was like, why is she dressed up like this, first of all? Why is this guy dressed up like this? And who is he? And also, why is there blood on her dress? Now it all makes sense. See, things add up once you start, like, deep diving and looking into things. I never would have known that. Never. So, that's definitely going to be exciting. I mean, I don't think it's going to work out the way they want. Because this person, or people, persons, are, you know crazy psychotic just so many things because obviously it's not just one person i mean obviously there is someone recording them and reenacting and recreating these murders but it's not just one person it's multiple people because there's literally multiple of them wearing an archie mask a betty mask so fucking creepy i mean like in the season five trailer seeing them dance to their own prom with knives and on and they have the mask on it's so fucking creepy kind of cringy but also more so creepy because like they have a fucking butcher knife and they're just and it's like whoa this is fucking psychotic who are these people like seriously maybe it's like everyone they've ever wronged in riverdale or at least n not wronged but taken down because they're evil people maybe they've come back to you know get some revenge i don't know some crazy shit. Maybe Charles is involved, you know? Chick. Evelyn. Oh my god. Evelyn could easily whisper in people's ears to do whatever she wants. She's done it before when she wanted Betty dead and fucking had Polly try to kill her. But, unfortunately, she tacked a nurse named Betty. And then she had Alice try to kill her, which, thankfully, Alice snapped out of it in time. But, like, Evelyn has some power that, like... You know, you think Edgar was the one who was in charge and was the brains of the cult? No, no, no. Evelyn is a next level psycho. She's like up there with Donna psycho because Donna is just full on psycho. This bitch is crazy. Ugh. Which we know she's going to be in season five because she was on set. So we know she's going to be in season five. Mm. Bitch, don't like you. Okay. Let's talk about, so I'm going to read some things. What does Riverdale Season 5 have in store for Veronica Lodge? Now, before I get into all that, we all know that when the seven-year time jump happens and they come back to Riverdale, Veronica is a married woman. Now, you think she would learn from her... You think she would learn from her being raised by Hiram and having a dad like Hiram to not be with someone like that? But, no, she did not. I mean, again... You know, she does have daddy issues, so, like, it kind of makes sense that she would choose someone like Hiram. But, Veronica, no. No. Why did you choose someone like this? Because it's so clear she's unhappy in this marriage. And this guy already sounds like a total fucking dickwad asshole Hiram 2.0. And it's like, I'm already not for him, you know? 
I don't care how cute he is. No, no. But it's like, Veronica, really? Really? You, you already have Hiram. Do you need a 2.0 Hiram? No. But, eh, it's not exactly working out anyways. So, Chris Mason, that's the, act, that's the guy's name, has joined the cast for a recur recurring role in Season 5. Mason will play Chad Gecko. I do like that name, Chad Gecko. 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 Chad Gecko, Veronica's controlling and jealous husband who works on Wall Street. So, not trustworthy at all. The type of person who would cheat on you very quickly, in my opinion. And not care one bit. And wants to be, yeah, in control. <laughs> yeah, he's basically everything I think. He's an alpha dog. Chad is threatened by Veronica's life in Riverdale, especially her friendship with Archie. I mean, rightfully so, but like, also, because for all we know, Veronica could still very well be in love with Archie, which let's hope not, because I swear to God, if we come back after the seven year time jump and Veronica and Archie start hooking up, I'm gonna be so annoyed. Like, seriously, please don't. Please, 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 please don't. Like, I know Betty and Archie get together it, later in the season, because, like, it's been confirmed, and I already know they're getting together. Like, it's... I didn't even need it to be confirmed. I know. Like, I 100% they're getting together. But, like, I don't want her to come back. And I know she's an un in an unhappy marriage and all this shit. But I don't want her to come back and still be in love with Archie after seven years. Because, like, dude, I don't need that. I don't want that. Like, I don't... I don't think anyone wants that except maybe Varchi shippers. Well, yeah, them. They'd probably want that. But, like, I just hope she doesn't come back in seven years and she's still in love with uh, Archie or Jughead comes back and he's still in love with Betty, you know? Because I swear, I hope after the seven-year time jump, we don't jump right back into this whole triangle shit and them hooking up and breaking up and getting back together, you know? I, at, they're adults now. Like Lily said, they're adults. So let's act like adults. I know it's Riverdale, but they need to act like fucking adults. Um, but yeah. Also, I hope after the seven-year time jump, Betty's fashion sense definitely improves because she is not always dressed the best. I mean, these sweaters that she wears, some of them are just the ugliest things ever. But let's hope after seven years, her style improves which we get to see long, uh hair down betty which is nice because we're so used to betty with the ponytail but now we're gonna see the betty with her hair down it's like finally yes because obviously seven years has passed they're gonna grow they're gonna change so they can't come back after seven years and still be that same person and still look the same you know they're gonna change in little ways and big ways personality wise look wise so I mean, I know it's a show and I know it's Riverdale, but you gotta stick to some truth to it, you know? I mean, you gotta have some truth to what you're portraying, you know? You can't just have them come back and go right back into what it was before, like seven years haven't, like seven years hasn't even passed, you know? You gotta make it like seven years really has passed, which is what's gonna happen. So, Mason's character will be introduced in the fourth episode of season five on Wednesday, February 10th. So I just wanted to include that. I mean, he is cute, got blue eyes, but yeah, he definitely looks like an asshole. Definitely, he play, he looks like he could be an asshole. Not saying the actor, but like the actor himself does look like he could play an asshole perfectly. And I mean, controlling, oh yeah, that's a great way to be in a relationship. <clears throat> okay. So what does Riverdale season five have in store for Veronica Lodge? Okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so where we left off... Oh, shoot. What the fuck? Okay. What the fuck? Okay, here we go. Am I like... Okay. Apparently. Okay, so what should happen? Veronica Lodge wasn't as integral in the central Stonewall prep storyline of last season, but that didn't stop her from thriving in her own storyline. While it's absolutely imperative that she does that again, it also goes without saying that she should be more involved in the overall arcs of the show. Whether that means getting drawn into whatever mystery brings the gang back together, or just the writers finding a way to make it feel like she's not just doing her own thing. It would be nice to see V get more of a chance to interact with characters she used to all the time, like we saw in Season 1, when everyone was involved in the central mystery. And on that note, it might be nice if she were to form a, a friendship with Jughead. 
Yes, 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 yes. I mean, for God's sakes, I would love them to get together, like, so much. But even a friendship would be nice. Even a friendship. Like, oh my God, I please, I hope that happens. He was betrayed by Betty, too. <laughs> yep. They have something in common. Their significant others are in love with other people who happen to be their best friends. And, well, they cheated, so, yeah, they definitely have a lot in common. And in fourth season, it feels like he and V barely know each other. Very true. I mean, they're friends, but you would never know it because we barely get any scenes of just those two. Even when it's all of them together, they barely interact. Like, what the fuck? I'm so ready for some friendship, man. I want to see more of that and, like, bond over the fact that you guys were betrayed, you know? Maybe Jughead can be there for her in this unhappy marriage because his girlfriend breaks up with him because he's more concerned about the book. And maybe also she sees that he's still in love with Betty, which is a possibility, of course. Okay. Speaking of interactions, her relationship with Archie needs to be addressed. Excuse me. As much as it pains this writer to admit it, Varchi needs a temporary break. Doesn't it pain me to admit it? Fuck. And temporary break? No, they need to end for good. Sorry, not sorry. The reason for that is simple. Archie betrayed Veronica's trust with his near affair with Betty. Not near affair, he had an affair. You don't have to sleep together to have an affair. I mean, they literally were on a bed together. They literally kissed, made out, like, come on. That's an affair right there. I mean, yeah, and betrayed her trust. You know how hard it is to gain back someone's trust? And why would you want her to get back with someone who betrayed her trust with her best friend. Especially when they have feelings for each other. It's very obvious Archie and Betty have feelings. That's not going away. So, I mean, there's no sense in them getting back together, Veronica and Archie, in my opinion. And he needs to face the consequences. Well, he will, duh. I mean, it's not like I would hope Veronica's not like, oh, okay, that's fine, what else? You know, no. Um... However, that break needs to be off screen because we really don't need to see Archie Andrews end up in another unnecessary relationship when we all know Veronica is the love of his life. Oh my god, who wrote this? That's funny as fuck. Wow. Planet delusional, man. That's funny. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm not trying to be mean, but really, dude, the love of his life? Have you not been watching the show? Wow, that's funny. Oh my god. We already know Varchi have their struggles ahead of them, so we'll leave that to the next slide. But as, but as for what post-time jump Veronica should look like, well, that's simple. She should be the success that determined that the determined young woman was always capable of being. Having come out of Hiram's shadow and enjoying her own reputation, repeti repetition, reputation as a businesswoman, this could be an exciting new era for her. Newsflash, she marries a Hiram 2.0, so... She's not really moving along that much better. Ronnie's life can't be perfect, though, because then there would be no need for picking up after the time jump. Whatever issues she'll have with her father and her new beau will undoubtedly pave the way for that much-needed reunion. Okay. Okay. Dude, like... Okay, like, really? People are, I mean, this person really thinks that Veronica and Archie are just going to get back together and they're never going to break up again, but... To each his own. Okay, what will happen? Much of Veronica's arc in Riverdale Season 5 does seem, to be, uh, does seem to be planning out like fans think it will. And that will certainly make things interesting. With that in mind, let's look at what... Uh, what uh, let's look at what the upcoming installment of the show has in store for her. For starters, she'll undoubtedly play a part in helping solve the mystery of the Riverdale Voyeur on tour is what they're calling it now, which obviously, I mean, she's involved too. Archie, Veronica, Jughead, Betty, Cheryl. I mean, they're all getting tapes and they're all having very, having their uh, houses videotaped, having murders recreated. So yes, she is involved. Giving the sleuthing gang one more hurrah before they all go their separate ways for college. After that, however, things will take something of a turn. Following the seven-year time jump, we know that Veronica is married to a rather unlikable, unlikable individual named Chad Gecko, and that he won't take too long kindly to her friendship with Archie. 
not only does that confirm that Chad's time on the show will be short-lived, it confirms that she and Archie are still somewhat in each other's lives. Well, obviously, they're going to be friends. I'm sure Betty and Jughead are going to be friends, too. They're all going to still be friends. It's been seven years, and also we don't know how they ended off, you know, in season four. So seeing, once I see how they end off in season four, if they end off on a good note or a bad note, I don't know. But yeah, in seven years and they come back together, I would expect they would still be friends. But that doesn't mean they've kept up with each other over the years. For all we know, they haven't, you know, any of them. So I guess we'll wait and see. Um... Okay, you chose like And it will be quite exciting to see Varchi exist as the friendship it never really got the chance to be. Yeah, because they were too busy having sex all the time. I'll never get over the fact that his dad just uh, got shot and he's taking a shower washing off the blood and she decides to get in the shower with him. That has to be one of the most cringiest and disgusting and worst scenes on Riverdale ever. I can't believe they did that. Like, ew. Like, ew. That's going to make him feel better. He's washing his father's blood off him. And she gets in the shower. Literally, that's all they have is sex and making out. Sex, making out, sex, making out. I mean, damn, her father destroyed him in so many different ways. Jeez, no one likes to look at that. I mean, I'm not saying it's her fault, but if he never would have got with her or met her, none of this would have happened to him or his father. Uh, of course, this will lead to the pair's romantic reunion, which absolutely must happen at some point. Mm, no, it shouldn't happen at any point. I know this is someone just writing their own stuff, but, like, come on, dude. Like, have some reality to what you're talking about, because this is a lot of delusional shit, in my opinion. Uh, Veronica will undoubtedly do well for herself, but the question will remain as to whether or not she's truly happy. Well, clearly she's not with this husband. Oof, I want to be happy. Riverdale Season 5 will be a big year for Veronica Lodge. There's no doubt about it, and we can't wait to see what she has in store for it. Period. Daddy. Period. Okay. I don't even like when they use daddy in the show. Like, Danny. It's just so fucking weird. But okay. Next. Riverdale Season 5. Oh, Riverdale. Five teasers for Chapter 77 Climax, which is Episode 1. So, let's get into it. If things had gone normally, Climax would have probably aired sometime in April. Yeah, don't rub it in my face. Meanwhile, meaning right when Riverdale spinoff Katie Kane was airing. Things are not normal, so it is now airing over six months, blah, blah, blah. Which makes an extended appearance by Zane Holtz as Katie's boyfriend, K.O. Kelly. Weirdly poignant in the episode. From bonding with Archie over their girlfriends to sparring in the ring, the extremely fun and funny appearance by Holtz might make for the most enjoyable Archie's boxing storyline has been since, well, ever. Someone go get KO over to Riverdale, Riverdale again ASAP. I'm so ready for that scene, and also I'm so here for it, and maybe he makes a comment like, so are you, maybe like KO Kelly makes a comment like, so you're in love with her, aren't you? Meaning Betty, and it's like, yeah. Just don't say in front of Veronica. Um, okay. Two, Panic at the Disco. Though Betty and Jughead might be all smiles taking their prom pictures, for most of the hour they're grappling with the evolving mystery of the entour. With some help from not one, but two old enemies, frenemies, the couple may get closer to... Stop recording. The couple may get closer to the villain than is comfortable, and Betty in particular makes some moves that threaten to drag her right back to the darkness she and fans thought she left behind. Oh shit, Dark Betty coming. She a coming. Oh shit. And two old enemies, frenemies. Hmm, Evelyn, Donna, Brett, Chick. Could be any one of those. Hmm, I'm intrigued. It'd be... I, I think it could be Evelyn. I have a feeling it could be Evelyn. Yeah, I think it could be Evelyn and Donna, maybe. I don't know. Ooh, I'm excited now. Like, I want to know, like... And, like, of course, Betty, you know, being the badass bitch she is, is going to be making those moves, so she could get dragged right back into her darkness, which, honestly, I'm, like, here for it and excited to see it because, like, obviously you can't just expect... Betty's mental health to just disappear, you know? She's always gonna have that darkness, always have those issues. But, so like, yeah, I'm not that surprised, and I'm also here for it. Like, I know a lot of people aren't, but I'm here for it. 
three, maybe this time. In the episode's strongest storyline, Veronica and Archie grapple with their futures post high school, leading to an incredibly nuanced and heartfelt performance by both Mendez and Appa. I wonder if it's Carry the Torch, which he wrote for Betty Cooper. Things may be taken a little too far when it comes to the plot as Veronica tries to carry the weight for both of them, but no need to light your torches. The emotional beats hit just right. Torches. Carry the torch. Just saying. Four, Tony's turn. While Bughead is focused on solving mysteries and Varchi on boxing matches, Choney, Shoney is all prom, baby. Cheryl, queen bee that she is, has only one thing on her mind, but this time it's Tony, who throws a wrench in the gears, not Cheryl. Is Miss Topaz being too passive? And will Cheryl go from Queen Bee to Red Queen? They say that those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Interesting. We all know that they go to prom together, Cheryl and Tony. They're, oh, they are prom queens. They are. They win prom queens, which of course they should. Iconic. And we all know that after the seven year time jump, Tony is in fact pregnant. She is because they put Vanessa's pregnancy into the storyline. So Tony is going to be pregnant. And we also know that she is still with Cheryl. They're not broken up. Cheryl and Tony are still together after the seven year time jump. And for all we know, they're having, I mean, she's pregnant. So they're having a baby together. Either she's having the baby for maybe Kevin and Fangs or she's having the baby for her and Cheryl, you know, which I'm so excited. That's going to be so good. What the hell? Oh my God, I didn't even say your name, so why do you come up on here, dude? Stop listening to me. My phone's listening to me constantly. Five, one night only. One final note here. Fans worried that the prom will be a lip service, a la la last year's predictably wrecked junior dance. I mean, who hasn't been attacked at their junior prom by their hook-handed serial killer dad and a giant stick monster, am I right? Am I right? Everyone goes through that. Normal. Don't fret, though. You won't see any promposals. You'll get all the rest of the trappings of the biggest party of the year, from proud parents snapping pictures to a soundtrack that would make Lainey Bet Boggs jealous. I have no clue who that is. Oops. It may not be the bulk of the episode, but by Riverdale standards, letting the kids enjoy themselves for a little while, even a little while, slow dancing, kiss, and have some fun for once, is positively superhuman restraint. Because as we all know, it's very rare they get to have just a nice, quiet evening and enjoy being a teenager. And enjoy being with their friends and not having to solve a mystery or worry about a killer after them. That is very nice. Shit. Oops. Oops. Ew. Oopsie. It went away. It went away. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. It went away, someday I'll find you. I can't sing, but I like to. Sorry guys, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Okay. Yeah, see on here, on this thing, it says that, uh, okay, wait. Oh, okay, so obviously Betty's going to be an FBI uh, trainee agent, you know, she's working for the FBI, but Lily said, rest assured, Betty will still break into homes and search through hundreds of files, but only legally this time, because, yes, uh, yes, yeah, so that's going to be awesome, oh my god, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, oh my god, I'm so excited. I thought there was more to it, but that was, like, it. Because I already talked about the trainee part. So, yes. Let me get this. What the hell? Where are you? What's going on? What is going on? Oh, my God. What's going on here? Here we go. All right. Riverdale Season 5 Premiere Screener Secrets. The Last Dance. The Last Dance. Okay. Veronica sings a song that we've already heard on Riverdale. There's only one musical number in Riverdale Season 5 premiere, and it's sung by Veronica Lodge, a La Bonne Louis. 
no surprise there as she's blessed us with many stunning performances from her very own stage. What's interesting is that the song she sings is one that we've already heard on Riverdale and it feels very different coming from her. Hmm. A lot of people are speculating it's Carrie the Torch and it could be. I mean, maybe it is. Hiram Lodge makes Archie an offer. Archie's future has been shrouded in uncertainty since, well, basically since we met him. At first, he was torn between football and music, then he wanted to use football to help him pursue music, and things have only got messier since then. Damn freaking right. At the end of Riverdale Season 4, Archie was resolved to pursue the Naval Academy that his mother recommended. However, here comes Hiram, in the Season 5 premiere, Hiram Lodge makes Archie another offer for his future. The question isn't what the offer is, but if anyone could really still trust Hiram after everything he's done, no matter how compelling the offer. No, you can't. Archie should never ever trust Hiram again. Don't get in bed hi with Hiram. Don't get into work with Hiram. Don't trust Hiram. Stay away from Hiram. Hiram is bad news. You can never trust Hiram. He will always be the person who is always out for himself and will do whatever it takes to get what he wants. Simple and plain as can be. And everyone else is just collateral damage. And everyone else is just his pawns. So no. Archie should not trust him. I don't care what the offer is. If it includes Hiram, no. No. Do not. Do not. Ugh. Okay, next. We meet Tony's grandmother. After Riverdale showrunner Roberto vowed to do better by Vanessa Morgan's Tony Topaz, it appears that they're making good on that promise, at least in the Riverdale Season 5 premiere. We get to meet Tony's grandmother in the episode, and it looks to be the beginning of an inter interesting storyline for a character. There's also plenty of Shoney in the episode, so our hopes are high from her Tony Topaz in Season 5. Um, if I remember correctly, her grandma doesn't know about her and Cheryl. And so, not, I, she's not exactly happy about it. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure, like, she doesn't know about her and Cheryl or know the extent of their relationship, living together and all that. And I don't think she's exactly happy about it, but I don't know for sure because I said it in a video a long time ago, so I can't remember. Okay, Betty and Jughead visit an old enemy. Ooh. After four seasons of investigating, Bughead's list of enemies is pretty extensive. Oh, uh, yeah. The hunt for the Ator is heating up now that, they're, now that they're threatened by the group directly. And Betty and Jughead visit a recent enemy to try to gain insight into the sneaky photographer or cinematographer, whatever, you know, the person videotyping. Ooh, I wonder if it's Donna. Maybe that's why she's on set. It would make sense, Donna. Because I haven't seen anything about Evelyn, so I want to say Evelyn, but I haven't seen anything about her. So I bet it's Donna. Ooh! Shit! They go to Donna for help? Hey, if anyone can think like the mind of a psycho, she can. Weatherby is back at Riverdale High. Yay! Fuck you, honey. Mr. Honey, get the hell out. I love you, Kerr Smith, but Mr. Honey, you fucking suck. I'll never forget how he talked to Reggie. That was so disgusting. That is so shitty. And knowing he gets beat by his father, I hated Mr. Honey. Ugh. Honey is out. So, Roberto went back to the former cult member they knew. Hey, he's better now. And he ended up saving them and getting them on the bus, you know? He's better now. He went through some shit, dude. Rather than risking, risking hiring a whole new terrible principal for the school. Hey, fucking man, we don't need another Mr. Honey. After his stint at the farm, Weatherby is back at his former post just in time for our favorite characters to graduate. We'll see how he handles all of the inevitable drama that's about to ensue. After him dealing with the farm, I think he can handle everything else that's coming, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, he don't know a lot of things that are happening, but if he knew, I'm pretty sure he could handle it. Because, like, the farm. Psychotic. Um, also, there's, like, this thing of... Is Archie going to graduate? Archie might not graduate. But I'm, I hope he graduates. I would think he graduates. But who knows. Okay. we all, Okay. This I talked about. K.O. Kelly makes an appearance. And he and Archie discuss their girlfriends. Katie Keene was sadly canceled after only one season on the CW. But at least one of its characters has lived to see another episode. 
K.O. Kelly visits Riverdale in the season 5 premiere, and on top of catching up with his old pal Veronica, he has an interesting heart-to-heart -heart with Archie about the women in their lives. It's a great guest appearance, and we wouldn't mind seeing him around the show more often. I hope he fucking notices that Archie has feelings for Betty, and they talk about that in the heartfelt moment they have. I really hope so. I really hope so. I know, like, Veronica's an old pal of his, but, like, Betty and Archie. And, like, it's so obvious. Like, anyone can see it, so, like, uh, I hope he says it. Says something. At least one Riverdale couple doesn't make it through the episode. Ooh, well, I mean... You know, Betty and Archie cheated, so Jughead and Veronica. So let's see. Alas, it's time for at least one of Riverdale's iconic couples to have their last dance. Oh, let's hope it's Betty and... or Betty. Betty and Jughead or Archie and Veronica, one of the two. It seems like... oh, Archie and Veronica. Because I, there's a theory that when she goes to bring back all of Archie's stuff after they break up, they end up having makeup sex or at least you know having sex one more time before they go their separate ways which no surprise if that does happen it's all about sex with those two it seems like tv prom nights are never complete without a breakup and riverdale has followed in those well-worn footsteps the end of high school is a time when everyone is thinking about their future and what's coming next and sometimes it's just easier if that doesn't include the person standing next to you damn that's harsh but that's true but don't fret, shippers. Sometimes couples who fall apart in high school are destined to find each other again when the timing is right. And their relationship can be better than ever. Since the show is jumping ahead, not five years, like they say, seven years, and only a few episodes, the timing could be a lot better very soon. Damn, I want to know who it is. The Autors videos claim another victim. <gasps> Season 4 ended just as the mystery of the on tour was really starting to heat up, and the season 5 premiere hits the ground running with this storyline. The last we saw from him was the video of the kids killing Mr. Honey, and the villain continues on that trajectory in the season 5 premiere, showing them taking another victim on screen. Betty and Jughead also go to extreme lengths to make strides in the case in this episode, and they're getting closer than ever to cracking it. We can only hope this new video is the last before the auteur is caught and we figure out what the hell they're up to. Because, like, seriously, what the hell? Who are these people? Because it's clearly not just one person. I mean, I, obviously there's one person who's in charge, and then there's all these other people who are just along for the ride. Like, who the fuck are these people? Like, oh my god. So, he's gonna kill someone. Who the fuck is it? Oh my god, is it a main character? Uh, could it be Reggie? Like... Oh my god, who are they gonna kill? Obviously, it's probably gonna be someone that is, like, gonna hurt us fans. Like, it's gonna affect us. We're gonna be, like, upset and sad. Like, who is it? Oh my god. I'm so excited. The Atua. The Voyeur, and now the Atua. Although, his, he creepy looking. Like, where's that picture? Let me get that picture. Because, like, I'm kind of digging this look. You know, they all have these very interesting looks, but I'm here for it. Looks like a scary owl to me. Looks like a scary owl. Because it is an owl mask. Wait. On it. What the fuck? On his. Is he. He's holding a video camera. Okay, he is. He's holding a video camera, it looks like. And then there's someone in the corner. There's a TV in the back, all staticky. Ooh, where's this at? Oh, also, can we talk about this picture in 501? Which. I mean, Betty? Whoa, look at the, the dress she's wearing. I've never seen Betty look like this. Like, this dress? Betty Cooper? Really? High heels? What the fuck? Like, her and Archie cheating definitely changed something about her. There's the picture. So, obviously, we have, you know, K.O. there, and they're watching Veronica perform. This is when Veronica's performing, obviously. Um, I mean, hopefully we get some Betty and... Archie glances and K.O. notices, you know, I'm just saying if he's gonna be in the episode Let's just talk about it, you know, let him give some insight too. let him tell you know Because it'd be nice to if he said something because it just further conform um, forms It just further confirms that Betty and Archie are so clearly in love with each other or have feelings with for each other that even he could notice So it'd be nice. That's why and then you have Jughead 
looking like Jughead, like usual, you know. I love Jughead, but the writers have really kind of ruined him for me, honestly. He's so boring at this point. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't believe Betty. Like, look at her. Like, what? Like, I never thought I'd see Betty look like this. Like, oh my god, girl. Get it. And I mean, look how gorgeous he looks. Ugh. Oh, you're looking so good. So good. So good, Archie. So good. Okay. Lastly. Let's talk lastly. Okay. So, I saw this on... Uh, Barchi Daily had this, posted about this, so I just wanted to get credit because, you know, I just wanted you to know. So one of the writers said, said this, one of the writers of Riverdale said this, As you probably understand, I can't say much or go into details, but let me just state that the general concept developed by the showrunner and senior writers was that Archie and Betty should undertake a long journey, much of which compromises their characters evolving and becoming more mature before eventually forming a strong romantic bond. A strong romantic bond that will never be broken. See? They're evolving. They're growing. And then they come together. They don't just jump into things like other couples on the show. Okay. Um, okay. Series storytelling really depends on the length of the show. So throughout seasons one to four, writers had to somehow show that development without giving away the denouement, denouement, I don't know how you say that word. I've never even heard of that word. Since season five is very likely to be the last one, the outcome of what was explored in the series over the past seasons, of course, would be shown. I think what may help the audience predict what will happen in the upcoming season couple-wise, and this is probably the only hint I can give, is looking back at how romantic bonds between Betty and Jughead and Veronica and Archie were formed. What influenced their original choices? Was it rejection, jealousy, despair, or something else? What impact do you think a narration time jump may have on these bonds? Unfortunately, that's all I can share at the moment. Oh my god, he's saying what everyone else thought, or what I think. Because it's true. Betty and Jughead and Veronica Archie, what influenced them, you know? How, look at how they formed their relationship. I mean, Veronica kissed Archie after, find, after knowing that Betty has feelings for him. So that was shitty as fuck. I mean, that right there was not a great way to start it. Uh, Betty and Jughead, you know, he was there for her in the time that she needed him. And that's what started their relationship, you know? So, I mean, yeah. I love that he said that because when you look at how Betty and Jughead and Archie and Veronica, how their relationships formed and how they started, it's like not the best way or the most usual way that relationships form, you know? And that's what's so great about Betty and Archie. I mean, of course, over four seasons, we would have loved to see them get together, you know? I would love to see them get together or even have a lot more scenes together, but it's nice because they've grown so much, you know, since that first season, and they're going to grow even more in the seven-year time jump, so when they finally get together, they're going to be at a place where they know who they are, they know what they want, you know, and so I think that's going to be one of the most healthiest relationships we've ever had on the show, because they didn't rush into anything, you know, they are growing and evolving and they were with other people they were other relationships you know but they always had that bond that friendship that connection but they still had their own things and so seven years later you know and them coming back they're gonna be much more evolved they're gonna be much more mature and so to see them in a different light much older and adult and you know having these careers and knowing what they want and all this shit, it's going to be so nice when they finally get together because it truly is going to be unbreakable. And I mean, I, let me put this down because that's done. I mean, when Betty and Archie get together, I just don't see them breaking up. I just don't. I don't see, I for one hope and don't see it happening, but I hope also because you never know with the Riverdale writers, you never know. But when Betty and Archie do get together, I don't see it being short-lived. I don't see any, I don't see them breaking up, any of that. Honestly, I don't. I feel like when Betty and Archie get together, it's going to be for the long run. Like, simple and 
Simple as that. It's going to be for the long run. I just don't see them breaking up here, breaking up here, breaking up here, back together, breaking up, back together, breaking up. I just don't see that. I don't. I don't see that happening like with Bughead and Varchi. I honestly think when Betty and Archie get together, they're going to be just stuck together. You know, not like in a bad way, but they're going to be extremely happy in their relationship while still having their own lives. And they're not going to need anything else or anyone else. All they need is each other. Like, I truly believe that when Betty and Archie get together, it's for the long run and they're not going to break up. That's my belief. And it has been confirmed. I saw on my Twitter that it was confirmed that Betty and Archie are getting together in season five, which we all knew. But, you know, again, we never know with the writers. So you kind of always have to be like a little nervous while you're excited. But it's confirmed. And I mean, I... I can't wait. Oh my god. Which means the picture of him in the fireman uniform, firefighter uniform, is him and Betty together. I mean, either they're just hooking up at that point, or they're friends with benefits, or they're actually together. But either way, I am so here for it. Like, I'm even, I'm here for friends with benefits. Like, I know they're going to get together, like, as boyfriend and girlfriend. But if they start out as just, like, friends with benefits, I'm fucking here for it. Like, I am so here for it. Like, I am intrigued to know if they kept in touch in that seven-year time jump. I'm intrigued. I truly am. I really hope that also Veronica and Jughead form a friendship and maybe even get together at some point. That would be fucking awesome. Oh, my God. Like, I hope if, if Veronica does go to anyone to talk to about her husband, I hope it's Jughead. I really wish it was Jughead. Like, I really wish. I just... I want them together so bad, but I would love a friendship. Oh my god, it would be so amazing. Because they have so much in common. It's crazy. Like, even stuff they don't realize they have in common. And so, them together as a couple would be fucking iconic. But even as just friends, you know, like hanging out and talking and being there for each other would be amazing. Because they can understand each other in ways that other people can't. And that's why it sucks that we never got to see a friendship. So I hope moving forward, we get a friendship. I really do. And maybe if we're lucky, we also get them together at some point. Because please, please. In my opinion, Cheryl and Tony are endgame. Veronica and Jughead are end. It stopped again. And Betty and Archie are endgame. That's my opinion. I 100% believe Betty and Archie are endgame. There's no doubt in my head that they're endgame. Like... Oh my god, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I am so excited. Tomorrow, season ep 5, episode 1, which is really, you know, still season 4, but... Oh my god, I can't wait till we actually... I'm more excited for whenever we get to the episode where it's after the time jump, because that's what I'm waiting for. I can't wait to see the episode that is after the time jump. Like, I'm so ready for that. When they all come back to Riverdale... That is the episode I'm most excited for. Oh my god, I can't wait. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that. Ah! Also, okay, if you made it to this part of the video, I know it's very long, sorry, but you know, it is me. I want to give a shout out to someone who uh, watches my videos, and I really appreciate it. And she has a YouTube channel too. I hope she doesn't mind. She has a YouTube... T can't talk. She has a YouTube channel too. And she also makes Riverdale videos and is also a Barchi fan, which, Barchi Squad, where you at? Hey, hey, yes, we stick together. And she understands, you know, she's gotten hate for being a Barchi fan, which I feel you. I have, too. Man, some people can be vicious. But you know what? Who cares? Ignore them, block them, because you know what? Barchi is here to stay, and so are we. We ain't going nowhere. But... Yeah, I really like her videos, uh, and I really think you should check them out, because she's like me. She talks about Riverdale, she talks about Bar uh, Barchi, she does reaction videos with the trailers. So, I definitely think you should try her out, and I'm going to link it down below, her channel, but just so you know what it is, it's Your, Go Your Girl Joyce is her YouTube channel name, and let me so, just to show you. This is her channel. 
So, I highly recommend you go watch her videos, subscribe to her videos, you know, give thumbs up, comment. If you are a Barchi fan like me, then you will love her. Like, I swear to God, you will. I'm so glad that uh, I subscribed and I'm talk and I'm watching her videos because I really enjoy them, actually. And she just seems really cool and nice and stuff. Like, thank you for supporting me also. And, yes, I am supporting you now because, like, yes, we stick together. Um, but, yeah, so I'm going to link her channel down below. So, please go check her out. She's really amazing. I like her content. And, yeah, you know, Barchi Nation, stick together. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you all very much. I'm so happy I actually made a Riverdale video. I'm very happy about it feels like forever since I've made one so it makes me happy to talk about them and just think about things to come so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys again soon and yeah tomorrow ah! oh my God. okay so I'm gonna go edit this and then post it and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and like usual I'll leave all my stuff down below if you want to follow me on any accounts you know whatever you know you don't have to but down below. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys again soon.